Good evening. How are you? <clears throat> I'm glad that you could uh, come with uh, Holly and I as we made this uh, visit, kind of an escape, a walk down memory lane, an effort to think about things that are positive, that are not so obviously evident in our day-to-day -day life. <clears throat> Given the Trumpian revolution, which is basically to destroy America as we know it and to establish uh, a monarchical reign by Trump and his passionate but non-thinking followers at whatever percentage of our population they are, 30% or so, and, and how <clears throat> they seek to win an election not by having a popular number, but by winning battleground states in the Electoral College. And uh, of course, lies and so on and so forth. So many who lose hope need to remember that in the past, America has been through very difficult times and challenges. And so uh, we went down to uh, where the World Trade Center had been and looked at what has been established in this place. And we looked at what's happened to African Americans in America. And it's still an unfinished work of political art. But we have seen how terrible it was to have police disregard as persons people because of their color. So that, that was part of the meditation. And then uh, watching Hamilton, although I know it's an entertainment piece, and for my money, it's got features that excel my previous favorite, which was 1776, about the writing of the Constitution. That Hamilton is about a passage in history that allows us to think about each stage when we could have made a wrong turn and tried to correct it and go forward. So when people ask me why am I not pessimistic, it's because my theory of life in part is when you see that ray of light and of hope and you go toward it, you increase the chances of a better day. Now I had a friend of mine when I was younger who claimed to be a pessimist, but he had several objectives that really pulled him along. And so he wasn't really a pessimist, but I, when I asked him why he was a pessimist, he said, well, you're never disappointed. And that's not true. An optimist is disappointed, but an optimist looks for a way to go forward. And an optimist can have those seasons when it's very difficult to be an optimist. Now, tonight, uh, I spent a little time earlier with Ari Melbourne, and we talked about two aspects of what is the Trumpian tragedy. Um, and the first one was about a man who has postured himself as a multi-billionaire who has enough money, so he testified to cover if someone should make a uh, fine of $454 million due by him. But we found out that, like everything else, and he's the one, he's the butt of his own joke, that he doesn't have the funds to deposit <clears throat> when he seeks to appeal the decision against him brought by the AG and resulting in a decision by the court that he had uh, perpetrated fraud on many different institutions, in some cases exaggerating the value of his property and other times devaluing it. So accentuated to get debt, devalue it to avoid taxes. And so where does he find himself now? The irony, and I mentioned it on the show, is that he can't get the bond in order to prevent the seizure of his property while he seeks to pursue what, in my opinion, is a frivolous appeal. Now, the bond for an appeal like this has as its rationale the notion that the person who won should not be put at risk by a person who seeks an appeal, particularly a frivolous one. But the kicker is that Trump can't get anyone to use his property as collateral and consider it, would you? I mean, take one property. What is the value of it as to it uh, completing the 454 million or whatever number you want to make it? And the answer is they won't trust him. And so it is a practical impossibility, according to his client, his counsel rather. And so what is he going to do? And among those who say that if he's going to 
submit a bond of any sort. He really can't submit a bond. What he has to do is submit cash and some equivalent liquid valued submission. And he can't do that. And this is Thursday. And if he doesn't do it by Monday, then the Attorney General of the state of New York can go and start seizing and selling the property to satisfy the judgment. That is a victory for Americans who demand an accounting. And it is a victory seemingly more likely to occur in New York if one were to try to define the codes by which we have victories as compared to um, compromises. And I think of uh, Judge Luce Cannon, Luce being my appellation for how she deals with things. And uh, she has a couple of very crazy ideas going on now about whether or not uh, Trump can wave his hand and thereby change a classified document into a personal document and therefore not be exposed. Which takes us to the second part of the uh, show with Ari this evening. And it is that a fellow named Butler, how appropriate, uh, was interviewed by the agents. And he could say that he was told with another to move the classified documents uh, to even to basically to hide them, to identify the videos, to, to delete the videos. And this is what we normally say, um, well, in an evidentiary context, um, consciousness of guilt. You know, the classic example of that is uh, you suspect somebody did something and they run away. So that could be consciousness of guilt. They ran away so they wouldn't be caught because they did something. But they could also panic. In this case, it's very hard to say <laughs> when you're hiding documents that the government is looking for and believes that you have, but you deny that you have any, the fact that they were moved and you can prove it by witnesses and by uh, hard evidence uh, move you into a position where Trump has no place to go. And it gets even worse because one of the people who was uh, implored to help in this task uh, was a person who was involved with the videos and there are questions whether he was loyal. And when Trump's lawyer asked if he was loyal and said yes, Trump uh, called him and personally arranged for him to have counsel. So the, the evidence exists, the cause is just, and the system basically outside New York flounders around. So if I had to make a choice right now and to find that ray of hope that we could run toward, that gives us a belief that we are going to get up from this terrible incident and move forward toward restoring the republic and perfecting our nation, then uh, we have this evidence of misconduct by Trump and we have a prosecutor in Manhattan who can prosecute the criminal case and he just won a whole series of motions that Trump sought to allow him to produce uh, or exclude certain evidence, including Cohen's testimony, who's critical. And so those don't exist in that trial. And the trial will happen in a couple of weeks, or start in a couple of weeks. And uh, I think that's the case that will go the distance and convict Trump and put him in custody. Now, today's prediction, as compared with tomorrow's surprises and things we can't imagine, but with the budget that Trump does not have in order to fight unfairly or fairly these charges suggests to us that he will be convicted. And you know, some said this is not so important. What are you talking about? It, in fact, the theme is perfect because it's sex, no drugs, and rock and roll. And uh, it involved uh, hush money in connection with the campaign. And while he was civilian, and there is no pardoning power. I don't believe there's any pardoning power anyhow that a president can pardon himself for a federal offense, but he has no power to pardon himself for a state offense. So there's that. There is the attack on his resources, which is significant in the attorney general's prosecution. And we have Carroll, who's already forced him to put on the, put on the barrel head, if you will, 
<laughs> almost $100 million. So, and this guy is being strangled financially. At least it appears that way. You never know who might put money on the barrel head to save him. And it's interesting in connection with the state attorney general's case that there's a special uh, a monitor who will look at any money that is submitted in connection with these uh, filings in the Court of Appeals uh, and uh, in the appellate court. And these uh, will be examined for what is the source of funds, what was said to get the funds, what information was withheld, and so on and so forth. In other words, would you trust this man to put up a property that was worth anything toward the almost 500 million? And if he managed to convince somebody to put it up, what did he tell them? And can we rely on that? So uh, those are a couple of my thoughts I have late at night uh, here in the Big Apple and the area, the entertainment area. But we've managed to cover several areas for the reasons as I've indicated. And I look forward to coming back, uh, recharge, because Holly and I haven't really gotten away uh, as we have on this uh, very short trip, seen family and friends and had a couple of missions to open our eyes to what is the hope today given the devastation of what Trump continuously does with some players, including the Supreme Court of the United States. So uh, I am encouraged. It's not going to be easy. And nothing perhaps in America that signified one of the significant pivots that was necessary was easy. And this will not be easy. But in the end, we will crush this bastard to the earth. So. <laughs> On that happy note, I say good evening, and tomorrow, Friday or Saturday, I'll be talking to you from, uh, from the roads. All the best. Good evening. Bye-bye.